Welcome to the Love Lab Podcast, a safe place to get real about sex. Whether you're a man, woman, single, or couple, this is the show for you. We are your hosts, Kevin Anthony and Celine Remy, and we are here to guide you to go from good to amazing in the bedroom and beyond. All right, welcome back to the Love Lab Podcast. This is episode 99. Can you believe we are only one episode away from 100? Wow, we will forever step into the three digits dimension. That's right. So make sure you tune in next week as well to hear our 100th episode. Oh, how exciting. We do have something very special in store for the 100th episode, but you're just going to have to be patient and settle in for today's awesome episode anyway. That is correct. And whether you are a man or a woman, you are going to want to listen to this episode because this is a big problem, it's a common problem, and I think if you're in a relationship and you're experiencing this problem, whether you're a man or a woman, you should understand what's happening and how to fix it. And what's the problem? Have we said the title yet? Actually, we have <laughs> not. <laughs> the title of this episode is How to Overcome P.E. and Last Longer in Bed, and P.E. means premature ejaculation. Mm-hmm. And so this is a really common problem, by the way. They say like one in five men will experience uh, premature ejaculation at some point in his life. A lot of the women that we talk to um, mention that too. So definitely... Um, I want to bring up one point before we dive into the subject. We are not here to shame people who experience premature ejaculation. We are here to help you because it is not something that you have to live with your entire life. And there are solutions and ways to change that. There absolutely are. And we'll definitely go into them. And I just want to say, like, I I really feel like this is a very misunderstood subject. Mm. Misunderstood not only by you know, the average person who might be experiencing it, but also misunderstood by mainstream science Mm -hmm. and and mainstream medicine. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that as as we go on. So we're going to bring some light in there and we've got a lot of things planned for you. Um, So stick with us throughout this whole show. Don't come too quickly. So, uh, but before we get started, let's give a big shout out to our sponsor, Power & Mastery. So if you want to join the secret club of men who are great in bed, then check out Power and Mastery. It is the most complete sexual mastery training for men. You can find more about it at powerandmastery.com. There is actually a course that is specifically designed to help you master your ejaculation. So you can take that course solo or you can buy Sexual Mastery, which has um, that course as well as other ones in it, like a full bundle. Uh, But there is something for you to learn how to last longer naturally powerandmastery.com absolutely and you know the intent of this episode is not to be a giant commercial for that program we actually want to deliver value and good information that you could take and just know that as we go through this information we are also going to make the case for why we think our program is better than what your doctor is going to tell you and and we're going to get really clear on what the differences are and why we've chosen to do what we've done in that course. So let's start with a definition, right? Um, because I think we need to get like maybe a standard definition. Give that one to us, Kevin. Okay, so the standard definition. I looked this up on Wikipedia, so it must be true. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I looked at a couple of sources. They all have slightly different variations of the same thing. Um That is, premature ejaculation, otherwise known as PE, occurs when a man experiences orgasm and expels semen within a few moments of beginning sexual activity and with minimal penile stimulation. So basically, what the standard definition is, if I could kind of sum up all the different ones that I've read on this, they basically say that it's when you just come really quickly. Mm -hmm. And... Yes, that is technically true, but when we give you our definition in a minute, you'll see that that's a little bit different. But think about this for a moment. I mean, we talk about this practically every episode, which is, um, depending on which study you read, they say that uh, the average man lasts uh, three to five minutes or five to seven minutes. So when they're saying premature ejaculation, that means it's even faster, like, less than seven minutes less than five minutes less than three minutes Mm -hmm. that's basically the standard definition 
So let's bring in our definition to it because I think as a woman, um, this is a post, by the way, I made on my Instagram account and it got a lot of likes and people chiming in like, aho, this is great. And basically what we were sharing this is that in short, our definition is if you come sooner than it takes for you women to ejaculate, to sorry, to orgasm, you ejaculate too soon. And so it really has to do, it's nothing to do with the timing, because even if you're thinking, well, I'm lasting five minutes, if she's not able to have a um, orgasm through penetration sex, it's probably because there's not enough time with it and enough stimulation in the right spot. And most likely it has to do with your inability to last as long as she needs you to last. And for us, that's more of our definition. Um, maybe the reframe wouldn't be so much premature ejaculation, but even early ejaculation. So if you can't control when you ejaculate, and if you come too quickly for that she can't orgasm, then it's too soon. And it doesn't matter even if it's 10 or 20 minutes, it's too soon if it's not long enough for her. Yeah, and so let's go back to those stats again, right, which we share practically every show, which is that when they said, you know, one study said the average man lasts three to five, the other study said the average man lasts five to seven, they also found that the average woman took 20 to 30 to have an orgasm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So if the average guy is ejaculating in three to seven minutes and the average woman is having an orgasm in, in 20 to 30 minutes, you can see there's a big difference there. Absolutely. And if you tuned in last week into our episode on oral sex, and um, you might be one of those guys, uh, that was one of my clients who uh, worked with me, and he was very good at oral. And that's kind of how he compensated because he wasn't able to last as long as he wanted. So he just became really good using other things. And yes, that's a solution. However, for him, he realized that he didn't want to spend his entire life compensating and still having the anxiety in his head and like the constant nagging of am I going to last long enough and he needed to make some changes. Yeah, I mean, there there are things that you can do. There are strategies mm -hmm. to be able to pleasure a woman and, and help her have an orgasm that don't require penetration mm -hmm. all the time. And at the same time, if all you ever do is fingering, oral sex, you know, using toys, whatever it is, it's really not the same as an actual penis penetration. Mm -hmm. And while she might like that, she might be happy that she's having orgasms. There's always going to be that like, I wish she could last that long. Yeah, and I think that any woman listening to today's show knows if you've had a really good lover once who was able to last for a long time, uh, it is something very different. The places you can go with a 45 minutes long lovemaking versus a four to five minutes are very different. But oftentimes we don't know what we don't know and it's of often difficult to imagine. So in this case, simply know that there is a potential to become much more um, in control, but aware. I don't really like control, but simply more aware and take your sex life to the next level. Okay. Absolutely. So what about starting to jump into some of the psychological causes? I think we're going to first go kind of the traditional route, right? And like... Yeah, so what I wanted to do was I wanted to talk about what does mainstream medical science mm -hmm. say are the causes? And so I went straight to the Mayo Clinic, uh, recognized as a, as a very prominent, you know, mainstream medical organization. And uh, I took some notes about what the what they say the causes are and then after that i want to talk about what we see when we work with clients mm -hmm. because there's overlap but there's some differences as well okay so starting with the mayo clinic stuff so they broke it down into a couple of different sections and the first one is psychological causes so they have a list of psychological causes here they are early sexual experiences sexual abuse poor body image depression worrying about premature ejaculation, guilty feelings that increase your tendency to rush through sexual encounters. Now, I actually agree with a lot of those. I do. They, they, they didn't really go into a deeper explanation mm -hmm. as to how some of these things can do that. We, maybe we'll cover that too. Um, <laughs> 
And and I I find it interesting because it, I find it that it's like the chicken and the egg. Which one comes first? Um, is it the um, the depression that causes premature ejaculation and the premature ejaculation? And like it's I don't really know if that truly the causes, but I do know that they are symptoms that something is out of balance and that they are very common in a lot of men who experience premature ejaculation. Yeah, and you know, one of the reasons why I just kind of read through that list and I didn't take each one one at a time mm -hmm. and kind of break it down and show you that maybe you had some early sexual experiences where you didn't last long because let's face it, nobody lasts long in the beginning. No. Nobody does, right? But then you get in your head that that's, that's all you can do and then it just, you, that program that that inner dialogue keeps running around through your head every time. And now here you are 20 years later, still running the same internal dialogue in your head. Like, like we could go through each one of these and, and talk about that. But I didn't really want to do that because I kind of just wanted to say, I, I kind of wanted to, I wanted to lump them all into psychological because whether or not it's an early sexual experience or it's sexual abuse or it's poor body image, how we address the psychological aspect of it is going to be relatively similar. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I didn't really break each one down. I mean, it, if anybody's listening to this and, and they go, yeah, but I don't get it. Like, what about depression? Because I have depression. How did like just email us and we could go into more depth about that potentially. Yeah. Oh. Oh, we'll make a video if there's oh, a lot yeah, of we'll, questions. We'll make, a, we'll make a, a separate video on our YouTube channel for that. Um, they also listed here, and this is still under the category of psychological causes, um, erectile dysfunction, anxiety, and relationship problems. Um, interesting that they kind of put that under the other factors and didn't list it in the main list. I'm not sure why, but, but those are all things that are basically psychological mm -hmm. problems. And then if we look at the second uh, category is the one they call the biological causes. So it's biological factors that may contribute to premature ejaculation. And the list kind of goes on with like, okay, abnormal hormone levels, abnormal levels of brain chemicals called neurotransmitters, inflammation and infection of the prostate or urethra or inherited traits. Very interesting about the inherited traits. Well, yeah, and it's it's pretty broad. Yes. Now, here's the thing. When, when you hear these lists of psychological factors and biological causes, um, kind of keep that in the back of your mind because when we tell you what mainstream medical science says you should do to solve this problem, it'll make sense when you understand what they think the problem is. Absolutely. All right, so... That's kind of like the science medical thing that's like dry in there. Um, let's look a little bit more at the causes that we see most often, right? Ah, yeah. See, this is where the rubber hits the road. Uh -huh. This is where the boots on the ground can give you feedback. <laughs> Absolutely. So I think that the biggest cause that we see is one that we call the nervous system overload. And it's not that difficult to experience a nervous system overload in today's world. I mean, there are so many things that are demanding our time, our attentions from our inboxes, from our social media, from the news that is constantly bombarding us with you know, not so cheerful news. I mean, all of these will create massive overloads of our nervous system. Our stress level gets really, really high. Yeah, our, our entire society is designed to keep you in that perpetual fight or flight state. Mm -hmm. And they actually do this on purpose. We're not even going to get into that. But, but there is a certain portion of our daily lifestyle and our, the world that we live in that is intentionally trying to keep you at a certain level of anxiety and fear and, and constantly stuck in fight or flight. One of the reasons for that, of course, is that when you're in fight or flight, your brain actually stops thinking. Mm -hmm. It stops thinking and it just goes into survival mode. It enters the reptilian portion of the brain and it's all about how do I survive? Well, if you're not thinking, then you're not paying attention and figuring out what it is the very people who are putting you in that state are actually trying to do to you. That's a whole other topic. It's not necessarily relevant, but just so that you understand, this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. Your nervous system is stuck up here in fight or flight 
all the time, mm-hmm. 24 hours a day, even if you don't realize it. And a lot of people say, I'm not really that stressed or I'm only stressed at certain times, like during the week. Yeah, but on the weekend, I'm not. You, know, you don't realize. That's why they call stress the silent killer. Mm-hmm. It's always there, even though you don't see it. And then if you look at it from a biological view, um, basically the fight, flight, freeze, uh, that's the sympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for your ejaculation. So when you're in that, that creates an ejaculation response in the body. When you are in your parasympathetic nervous system, which is more of the rest, relax, digest, and I'm, you know, kind of like uh, generalizing generalizing it, right. Uh, It's mostly responsible for your erections. And you need to have a good balance between your sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system. It's not that one is bad. It's just that you shouldn't be spending all of your time in either one. And in order to have a good erection and good sexual response, you need to have both a parasympathetic nervous system response and a sympathetic nervous system response. And so that's when uh, you are hijacked and always in the fight, flight, freeze. You are spending so much time in the response of the body that says must ejaculate. Because when you have to ejaculate, I mean, when there's dense you don't really have time to fuck you just need to come quickly and save yourself from danger ah yes and that actually leads us right into the second most common cause Mm -hmm. that we see working with clients which is poor masturbation habits okay so maybe i can't speak for all guys but i'm pretty sure i can speak for most guys which is most men men boys, children, discovered their penis at a pretty early age. Mm -hmm. Ooh, hey, this feels good. Uh, Hmm, what happens if I do this, right? Mm -hmm. You know? And, of course, doing that, if their parents find out about it, they they generally tell them it's wrong, it's bad, it's this, you've got religious pressures, you've got all this kind of stuff telling you you shouldn't do this. Mm -hmm. Everybody does it anyway, we all know that. But then what happens is, well, it kind of goes underground, it goes behind closed doors, it goes... Oh, I'm going to be in the bathroom for five minutes or, you know, oh, I'm, you know, they're going to be downstairs cooking dinner for, you know, whatever. Like you sneak it in where you can and, and, and you're worried about getting caught. So what do you do? You do it fast. Mm-hmm. You do it fast. You're just like, I got to hurry up and do this. Then let's take it a, a step further. Now you're older, right? You've conditioned yourself already over many years to ejaculate quickly. Now you're watching a lot of porn. Mm hmm. What do you do? You look at these super exciting images, by the way, which trigger your brain in like putting it slightly in overload, right, of the extra stimulation. And then you're going from one shot to another, quickly browsing and quickly coming. You know, I don't remember off the top of my head, but we did do a whole show a while back on statistics with with porn Mm -hmm. because Pornhub put out uh, their yearly statistics. Mm -hmm. And they did have a stat in there for the average length of time that somebody watches porn. It's minutes. Yes, yes, it minutes. is. Minutes. And why do you think that is? Well, it's very obvious because you, you, you find the clip that you want and this is really exciting and you watch it for a few minutes and then you masturbate, you come and then you're done mm-hmm. and you're off to the next thing, right? <laughs> so <laughs> that's why the average, it's not because they're terrible. It's not because it's not pleasurable to watch. It's not like, oh, this sucks. I'm going to change the channel, right? I mean, maybe until you find the one you like, but there's plenty to choose from. So you will find something you like. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, is yeah, that you've conditioned yourself through hyperstimulation and short, quick masturbation to ejaculate quickly. And and think about it just like any other muscle in your body, right? You are literally training it a certain way. Mm -hmm. They always say how you do it in practice, in training, is how you'll do it in the real thing. Mm -hmm. Ask any professional athlete. If you want to go run a marathon, you can't just go run five miles a couple times a week and expect to be able to run a marathon. Yeah. And it's not even just about building up the conditioning. That's part of it, right? The, the thing is, is your body had never run a marathon. Mm-hmm. How do you expect to, to do it, right? And it's, it's true for anything. It, don't, it doesn't really matter what it is. You have to do the thing that you want to do and do it as if you were doing it. We'll get to that later too. Yeah. And that, our, our third cause here that we see most often is one that we would call maybe psychological trauma. Uh, I don't know if I would say always trauma, but it's definitely mindset. It's definitely mind related and it gets in the way, whether it's um, religious 
um, trauma and I can really call that trauma because we see a lot of people who come with that baggage um, or it's a mindset that you've been stuck in but it really hinders your ability to perform in the bedroom and so it's about getting over that um, so really if we to sum it up we've got the nervous system we've got the poor masturbation habits and we've got the mindset that's not thinking like a winner it's thinking like like a loser and keeping you trapped in anxiety yeah so no we did not just call every person that premature ejaculates a loser that's not what we said <laughs> so it's the mentality the mentality of a not right. winner <laughs> <laughs> well you know look lots of good people who are not losers still struggle with this of problem course. but it can get into your head that well you start thinking things like well, every time I ejaculate early, so that means it's going to happen the next time. And you get in sort of that downward spiral mm -hmm. of expecting that your performance is not going to be good. Well, yeah, and you said this thing, you're no longer a champion. You kind of set yourself for an average performance. And that's really what, what I mean about that with that mindset. Yeah. And, you know, uh, do we have this? Let me just quickly look down here on the mistakes. Okay. We, we didn't write it in here, so maybe now is a good time to talk about it. So under this psychological section that we have, there's a something that we tend to see in a lot of people that have premature ejaculation. Do you have it? It's in the mistakes. Oh, sorry. Okay. I, You're going to have we'll to get wait. There. We'll get there. I know it's going to be hard. So I want to do two things. I want to start, I want to tell you about a story first, um, just to kind of sum everything that we've talked about. So it's a client of mine that, um, that sought some help because... He's, he was he got married as a virgin um, so as you would expect uh, the the sex was not that great because hey you have to, to take time to learn right and what happened with him is that he started to have premature ejaculation you know we have to understand that this was an arranged marriage they, they didn't have the best communication and connection so there are a lot of um, things holding them back there working against it a lot of obstacles in the way absolutely but here he is experiencing premature ejaculation he doesn't have the tools he doesn't know what to do so he goes to his doctor and his doctor is like well let me give you Viagra so he puts him on Viagra or Cialis one of the other and just gives him that and no, he tries that on and he's like, well, actually, I've never had an, an erection problem because what those are good for is to help s with erections, you know, to help the dilation of the vessels and make the circulation a bit better so that you have better erections. He never struggled with that. So then he goes back to the doctor and he's like, OK, no, that's really not my problem. So the doctor then goes like, OK, I know what your problem is. So I'm going to put you on SSRIs, uh, which are kind of like a term for um, antidepressants. antidepressants. And so he's, he takes this and um, now he's able to last in the bedroom because of the SSRIs, but suddenly he's not able to feel anything. And he's like, what's the point? He literally is like, what's the point of having sex if I can't feel anything? You know, the funny thing about that is that it's a well-known side effect of mm -hmm. SSRIs that you have decreased libido. Yeah. And, and it wasn't just about decreased libido. He was saying like even being touched, he couldn't really even connect the, the things anymore. And so that left him stuck. And this is why he reached out to me and was like, can you help me? Because obviously the routes that I've been taking with going through my doctor is not working. And I was like, of course I can help you. And these things can be changed in just a few weeks. So um, that's to tell you like a real story of what happens and where it can go. And we're going to talk to you about mistakes and solutions. But before we do that, we want to invite you into our VIP program. Uh, so if you are longing, longing for deeper levels of sexuality coupled with emotional intimacy, spirituality and just true connection, then a sexual power and passion VIP program is for you. This next level intimacy coaching for Modern Couple is designed to help you bring the passion back between the sheets and beyond. This 90-day program is truly for the couple that does not want to live a life of average and wants to be synced up sexually so that they can thrive with more purpose and passion in life. You can find more about our VIP Platinum program at CelineRemy.com forward slash passion. All right. I want to slightly rearrange our notes here. I want to talk about mainstream medical solutions first, mm -hmm. and then we'll go into mistakes that men make from our point of view and our solutions. 
Um, just because it's so relevant to what we were just talking about with what the doctors prescribed to your client. Mm -hmm. So I will say this before I go into this short list here, that uh, according to the Mayo Clinic, they did have some suggestions for treatments that we do agree with. Mm -hmm. So they did have uh, counseling for the psychological causes, um, and they did have uh, one other one that we'll talk about later when we get to ours. But other than that, they had a whole bunch of things listed on there that I don't agree with. So let's talk about some of those. One of them was the use of condoms. Okay, why do they say condoms? And usually double condoms. Yeah, just because <laughs> it numbs you out, you can't feel anything mm -hmm. if you reduce the sensation. But here's the problem with that. It doesn't address the underlying cause. Mm -hmm. Right, so it doesn't really fix your problem. It just sort of masks it, and it may or may not even really work all that well. Well, what happens is that a lot of guys think that they have premature ejaculation because they're overly sensitive, and I don't think it's really the right um, explanation to it. And so they're taking the route of the condoms. That's another client of mine that I had who uh, used to do two condoms at a time, and this worked short time. And he was like, okay, now I've made this and now it's good. And then it failed again. And then he had to find another solution because these were kind of like temporary band-aids. Yeah. And even, even if it is a sensitivity issue, mm -hmm. I mean, that might work. But most likely it's combined with a psychological issue. Mm -hmm. And the psychological issue is not going to be solved <laughs> with a condom. Absolutely. It's just not. So the next solution is to get into like topical um, anesthetics, things like desensitizing sprays, sprays and creams that basically just numb you out again. Yeah, but they tend to also numb your partner out. So a lot of women don't like that because you'll spray that on your dick and then you'll penetrate her and then she'll be like she might feel a tingly sensation or numbing and a lot of women will be like i don't want you to use that spray on me yeah. because it doesn't <laughs> agree with my pussy <laughs> well not only that but she doesn't want to be numbed out she wants mm -hmm. to feel everything <laughs> absolutely <laughs> you're going to take that 20 to 30 minute period and drag it out to 40 or 50 minutes mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay and then the, the other one that's this is really big and this is exactly the route that your client was mm -hmm. put down which is oral medications all right, so you know the the first thing they did was um, uh, the Cialis or Viagra, and then it was right. the uh, SSRIs. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So prescription medications. The mm -hmm. Problem with that is again they're not solving the underlying problem, and those drugs actually have a whole host of side effects mm -hmm. that come with them. Mm -hmm. Now remember we were talking earlier about um, the list of of um, causes according to the Mayo Clinic, you can understand why they go through these sort of treatments, right? Because right under their biological uh, causes, they have abnormal levels of brain chemicals, neurotransmitters. So what are they trying to do with their antidepressants? They're trying to alter the brain chemicals to change it. So that, that's one of the reasons they do that. And then, you know, they've got, they got, uh, we read them earlier, but you, you can start to see if you, if you match up what they think the cause is, why they go the route that they do. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, there's other reasons for that too because in the mainstream Western medical system, basically you either cut it out with a surgery or you use a drug that's pretty much all they do. And it's never really solving anything. It's masking things. It's very rarely giving you an awesome solution that's holistic. And I think that's really where then we have so many people coming to see us because they tried these things and then they're like, well, it doesn't work. And we're like, of course it doesn't. We have to look at the whole picture, not yeah. just isolate one and, aspect. And of you it. know what was sad is when I was researching that, I saw that they have three new drugs that they're working on wow. to potentially solve this problem. And I can guarantee you they're not really going to solve it. They're going to mask it. Mm -hmm. They're going to somehow work with the symptoms, and they're going to have a host of side effects. Yeah, that's the biggest problem there is the side effects. I mean, yeah, that's, that's huge. And so yeah, this is why, like I said earlier, when we talk about this kind of stuff, we want to talk about how our program that we've created doesn't have any of these side mm -hmm. effects. And it's not just treating symptoms. Mm -hmm. It's actually going to the root cause of why you're having this issue and helping you solve that. So let's talk about some of the mistakes that we see people. Now, that you, if, it's one, if it's you and you're like, yeah, I can't last as long as I want, you've probably tried a lot of things. And 
Uh, one of the biggest one, and that's the one you wanted to talk about uh, that we have seen, and you might not be actually aware of that because it's kind of, uh, it's a pattern. And unless, unless you've slowed down enough to start to look at it, it's about always taking shortcuts in life and wanting things right away. And so sometimes we have that with our courses, um, with Master Your Ejaculation. The number one question we get, somebody purchases Master Your Ejaculation, and within three to five days, the first thing they could say is, I'm not having any results. It's not working. How long is that going to take? How long is it going to take? So. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, you are retraining your physical and mental body. Do you think you can do that in three days? <laughs> I mean, studies have all shown it's at least 21 days, and that's on the conservative sides. Yeah, well, yeah, some say 21, some say up to 40 days uh -huh. to create a new habit. Mm -hmm. So what do you expect, you know, when you're working with your sexuality? But this is a mistake that we see that over and over. I mean, at this point, we've worked with over a thousand of men and it's like from all walks of life and it is a commonality with all people who experience premature ejaculation that there's this desire to want things they quickly want everything right now exactly and what's interesting about that is that that isn't something we read somewhere and if you take the people that that contact us from our programs even out of the picture and just focus on the people that we work with that we we get to talk to in mm -hmm. person or at least remotely. Mm -hmm. And we get to find out a little bit about their life and, and how it works and how they operate. It is a common thread through the majority of them that they always want instant gratification. Mm -hmm. So that's your mistake number one to really look for and start to, start to slow down everywhere, right? And that will also retrain your nervous system. Remember when we're talking about your nervous system and the importance of downregulating so that you could last longer. Mm -hmm. The second mistake that we see is people who know are like telling themselves, uh, think about a baseball grandma or Margaret Thatcher naked on a cold day, whatever <laughs> exactly. that is. You have to distract yourself. <laughs> that's, that's one of my favorite. It's an Austin Powers uh, reference when he's trying to not get turned on. He's like, Margaret Thatcher naked on a cold day, Margaret Thatcher naked on a cold day, you know. <laughs> but it's it's basically, it's the distraction method. It's a mental distraction that makes you not aware of what's going on. And that's the problem with mm -hmm. it, right? Because what you ultimately need when you're trying to manage your excitement level and mm -hmm. not ejaculate too soon is you need to know where you are on something that we call... The arousal scale. The arousal scale, right? And the arousal scale is knowing how close you are on a scale, where your body is at. Mm -hmm. The problem with the distraction method is you start going into your distraction like, okay, okay, I'm thinking about baseball or work or, or whatever it is. And guess what? She feels that you're not there with her. Well, that's that's another unfortunate byproduct of mm -hmm. this method is, is you basically check out mentally and she mm -hmm. feels it. So now she's not connected to you. And if she's not connected to you, she's not really turned on anymore. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is, is that you can get so lost in that mental distraction that you actually lose touch with where you're at in your arousal mm -hmm. scale. And then you can ejaculate and you were like, wait, I thought I was under control. How did that happen? Mm, absolutely. Another thing that happens as a mistake is our mistake number three is being caught up in the fast breathing. And this is kind of like a reaction when you're not really paying attention to your body. Most people, when they get aroused sexually, they will go into short, fast paced breathing. This short, fast paced breathing will stimulate your sympathetic nervous system, the fight, flight, freeze, which will then in turn increase your chances of having ejaculation happening sooner. Absolutely. And in both Taoist and Tantric practices, they have specific techniques for breathing when having sex. Mm -hmm. And part of that is to control exactly what we were just saying. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, we teach that in the course, or a version of it. Yes. To help you learn to control your breathing. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it is a fantastic... Um, tool and it absolutely works and mm -hmm. it absolutely helps i mean your breath can literally becomes the brakes or the accelerator for your sexual energy once you start to uh, f understand it and feel it better mm -hmm. 
we've already talked about the poor masturbation habits as being a mistake, so we're not going to spend more time here. But do know that in our course, we actually teach you a practice to reverse that. Mm -hmm. That is true. A very important practice and, to and, reverse that. And we'll, we'll tell you that part of our solution to here a little bit. Um, the other one is to have too much stimulation. And that can happen with... Um, overloads of like being lost in sexual fantasy or going too quickly with the sensations like on the shaft or anywhere else fantasizing about i don't know having a threesome with your girlfriend rather than being there i mean so many things so it's just too much stimulations too quickly yeah you know we talked a lot about psychological causes mm -hmm. and we talked about you know it could be anything from trauma to anxiety about performing well and all that kind of stuff but one thing that we didn't really talk so much about was uh, excitement level, mm -hmm. which is, you know, uh, you're fond of saying this all the time, that our, our brain is our number one sex organ, mm -hmm. right? Because so much of our turn on and our sexual experience really originates from the brain. Well, that can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing because what a lot of guys do is they build the excitement up so much mentally in their head that physically they can't contain it. Absolutely. Um, and then the last mistake that I want to briefly talk about is about your pelvic floor muscles and that a lot of guys are not aware about. What you start to do is once you research the internet or have premature ejaculation, people like do Kegels. Okay, so do like muscle control and people get into that. But what they don't do is that they don't do it properly. So they end up with overactive pelvic floor muscles, which will create tension. Tension in the body equals ejaculation. Tension in general, whether it's mental or physical, will result in ejaculation. So whether you have your pelvic floor muscles that are too tight, whether you're mentally holding on to something and you're like too tight there too or too like yeah, the, too overactive, right? For sure. You know, the problem with the, with the Kegels is that either men don't do them and they have mm -hmm. very weak pelvic floor muscles. Mm -hmm or they do them wrong, and then they have a whole bunch of tension, and that causes its whole own problem. So there is a right way to do it. We also teach that in the course as well. Absolutely. So now that you've got all of these, we want to leave you with actual solution also just to get you started. Um, what can you do now that you're more aware? First of all, having awareness is key right knowing what to look for we've given you a lot of different mistakes a lot of things to look for so pay attention which ones are really happening for you number two you need to understand that the way you do your solo sex aka masturbation and uh, the way you do sex with your partner are not really different. And what I mean by that is that most guys think I can masturbate a certain way, I can behave a certain way when I'm by myself, uh, but then my body will know the difference once I'm with a partner. Well, no, it doesn't. And for a lot of men, they masturbate more frequently than they actually have penetration sex. That's true. So it's just like anything else, mm -hmm. you know, how you do it in training and in practice is how you're going to do it in the real thing. So what we want you to do is actually to masturbate. You never thought that we might give you that as a homework, um, but is to use your solo sex practice as a way to train your body and retrain your um, nervous system. The gist of it is pretty uh, simple. What you want to do is to set a timer. Usually we like 20 minutes masturbation. And it's to pay attention to your body, not be lost in fantasy. You're not going to be like watching porn. You are going to start to tune in and feel your body, start to notice where you're at on that arousal scale. Um, and maybe at first you might not be able to go from like 30 seconds to 20 minutes. It might be too much. But start to lengthen. If you only last for 30 seconds right now, make it a goal to last for at least two minutes and then stretch it by a minute every time you masturbate. And what you need to do is to slow down a little bit. And if you feel like you're getting very close, take your hands off, breathe, do, do some belly breathing for just like a reset and then go back to the stimulation. And when you start to do that, you are going to start the retraining that happens. 
a lot of guys have wondered like how often should I do this and how long. So ideally you want to get to a 20 minutes marker. Ideally, you want to do this at least once a day. Well, actually, once a day is pretty much what you would do, but at least for three weeks straight. That's the most It important. It takes time. So, yeah, the, the basic practice you can take away from this episode is to try to use your masturbation practice to simulate how long you want to last in actual sex. Mm -hmm. Now, there's more to it than that. There's a whole technique that brings in the arousal scale in, in a certain way and all that. We're not going to, we don't even have time to go into that <laughs> in this episode, but it's all in our course. So just go check out powermastery.com if you really want to learn that specifically. But at least you have something that you can start with, a place to start. And it starts with you. It starts with reconnecting with your body differently. And there is hope. It doesn't take long. Most of my clients, people we've worked with, it only takes them about three weeks of retraining themselves, between three to five weeks. And they see a lasting difference for life. So there is hope. We know it's possible. Don't sell yourself short. Don't settle for something that's not exactly what you want. We are here to help you. We can work with you uh, privately in person through coaching. You can work with us um, into our online programs at your own pace from the comfort of your own home. There are multiple ways to get you to last longer in the bedroom. Absolutely. And, you know, we, we created these courses because we worked with so many people and we identified all of these things that they had in common. Mm -hmm. And we're like, how can we help these people? How can we put this together in something that, that they can then take and follow? Absolutely. So a lot of people do things the other way around. They're like, oh, let me make something I can sell and then figure out how to do it. It's like, no, no, this came from our experience working with people. So mm -hmm. we know that it works. We also know that it takes time. So you want to be dedicated. If you really want to solve this, you can do it. All right. Put all of this into practice today. Absolutely. Whew. All right. We covered a lot of ground. We sure did. That is all the time we have for this episode. So we will see you next week for 100. <laughs> We hope you like this episode of the Love Lab podcast. If you enjoy this show, subscribe, leave us a review, and share it with your friends. And for more free, exclusive content, join us in the Passion Vault at CelineRemy.com forward slash vault. That's C-E-L-I-N-E-R-E-M-Y dot com forward slash vault. Thanks for listening. And remember, you're amazing. <laughs>